Driving through Kayalicha to meet Funeka Soldat, a loud and proud lesbian activist in this township, there's such a clear ambiguity between her rural roots and city life on these streets. It makes me wonder about her experience growing up in a culture with such clearly defined gender roles and how hard it must be to find your space, even here in the city, whatever the consequences. Where we grew up was like a little village. Uh, my grandmother, and because most of the time my mom was away working. We used just to look after uh, cattle and, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and ships and everything. Playing till late, uh, not scared of anything. It was a very peaceful uh, uh, environment. My family were so traditionalist. I believe too much on my ancestors. For me, I can't communicate directly to my ancestors. I believe that uh, my granny is the one who's, who's communicating with, with my ancestors on behalf of myself. Um, um, I believe she she's the only person who is making sure that I'm, I'm always safe. The understanding of gender roles was not an issue for me at that time. I mean, for my grand, that uh, she didn't put him in, in boxes, like, yeah, you're a little girl, you have to do this and this. She just always um, leave me to live my own life. I think I started to be conscious when I was a little bit growing. I have a sense that there was something that was different from me from other girls. The feelings that I was having towards women, um, those were things that were very foreign to, I mean, to my belief. I think that was the worst thing that really, really frustrated my mom because most of the kids that my mom have, they never survive. Um, I was the only child of my mom who survived with the hope that in future then we'll be having this little family, Funega having a boyfriend or whatever, then I will have another kid. Physically, when my, when, when my parents look at me, it, it was looked like I was ambiguous genitals. I couldn't refer it to anything, like maybe saying that, oh, it's cool because I've seen this before. But unfortunately, to me, it just looked like I'm the first person that was having that. The doctors made my parents, my, my family to believe that uh, I was intersex. My mom really couldn't understand um, um, at that time uh, how she can handle uh, me being, a, being, being ambiguous. They didn't explain for her exactly what was happening. The one thing that she knew is that the doctors were going to make me uh, the girl that was hoping for. But unfortunately, after the operation, I mean, things didn't work the way she was expecting. And I remember one day when she was saying, I have to <coughs> either choose um, be going out with women and then either not to be her mother anymore. So I couldn't really choose or whatever. I didn't say anything to her. But I mean, I think from then she noticed that uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, to, to follow what she was saying. And I think that was the end of my relationship with my mom. It was in the early 90s, during an atmosphere of national change and hope in South Africa, that Funeka came to Cape Town in search of her own freedom. Cape Town was seen as a liberal area and also it's a city. So I was thinking maybe, I mean, people are going to be open-minded. The one thing that I was hoping for was for me just to be me, just to live my own life. And, and to freely love, uh, love women the way I, I feel. Arriving at a free gender event Funeka organized, I imagine her in the space as a young woman, long before public gatherings like these existed, ones that lobby for dignity, safety and justice. <laughs> 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 
Through the years, Funeka's greatest support has come from Derek Fine. He's a fellow activist and her closest friend. Tell us about meeting Funeka for the first time and your first impressions of her. And it was a time when street committees were very much um, prevalent in Cape Town and in the area of Kailicha where uh, Funeka was staying. Funeka being who she is, out and proud and in your face, but at the same time very warm, Funeka was just arrived in Cape Town and she was being herself, like she always is. And Tommy mentioned that there were comrades in the area who weren't too happy with this you know, black woman being really open about who she was and being an out and proud lesbian. And there was a major interaction episode happening there. Funeka wasn't going to back down, she never does. And um, yeah, that was my first introduction to Funeka. And I thought, wow, I'm going to meet this, this strident activist. Our activism doesn't define us and doesn't define our relationship. Our relationships are very much just of two human beings who've connected across many boundaries and yet we live in very different spaces but we have a lot in common. I started really to not stop there, to be reckless coming out like this is Funeka and, and, and I'm, I'm a gay woman so, so what? And I really, really paid heavily about that. 